you know, okay. any rules. So let's start with, we're going to go through all 12 signs and let's start with Aries. So starting off with Aries, listen to the noises. <laughs> it's so funny. We got beep, 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 beep. 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 Okay. Wants us to pay attention. Starts off with big energy in January, mid-February. There's, there's a lot more energy going on for Aries right now. If you're born between April 2nd and 13th, for you early Aries, like the ones that are born right in that section, that's more like from like about, mid. Yeah, yeah, about mid six or seven degrees through, you guys are dealing with a square. Aries, it's not, it starts off with a lot of energy to begin with, but there's a lot of pressure coming towards you throughout this whole year mm -hmm. with Saturn squaring your sun. It could feel like you are being um, pressure cooker, like you're not being able to make things happen easily with the Saturn square of the sun. So you've got to exercise discipline or put in an ex extra amount of energy. So there's the first one for Aries. And that's the good news is it's going to try and by the end of this year, you've got some support from Jupiter mm. from Sag trining you. But there is a quality for Aries of um, getting something done by using your will and being able to exercise discipline because there's some support coming, but it's just going to require a lot more attention and a lot more focus. Deborah, before you go on, there's a lot of questions about, is this only for sun sign or moon rising midheaven? Perfect. So I want you to specifically... <clears throat> Wait, did I the sun sign? That's so right? funny. Someone was at the Hyatt and just wrote and said they heard the same noises. <laughs> um, we're, we're not just doing it for sun signs. This is for the rising, for sure. If you're a rising sign, we're, the unfortunate part is we're giving, we should have given degrees. So we're going to say that um, the earlier late degrees, I think what we we're talking about was six degrees to about, it was like, no, Aries this year would be. Uh, well, Saturn's at 14. So, so let's say it's between, you'll have, this is a short answer. It's for your rising sign, it's for your sun sign. And we're giving it specifically for people born with Aries, the dates for them. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Here's the deal. We're going to give you the overview. You have to call and get a certified astrologer to look at your chart and actually give you the dates because it's too, it's a cheap answer for us to say all Aries risings. But I would just say to you, if you're an Aries, you're going to feel yourself Aries rising or um, Aries sun. These are both two. You're going to feel yourself with a momentous beginning of this new year. Mm -hmm. And then what you're going to, how do I call and get a personal reading, Steph? The short answer is on my website, Deborah Silverman Astrology, three words, dot com. Under work with me, you'll see certified astrologers. And it's $200. So if any of you want to get your reading for the year, that would be a strong suggestion because we're giving you an overview. Thanks, Carrie. <clears throat> but there is definitely some momentum, it with, um, especially in the summer for Aries. That's right. going to give you the chance to partner and really work on manifestation. You're going to manifest this year, Aries. Do you want to do Taurus? You just got to stay close to your work. Like, you know, just pay attention to that, that right. energy of that, that stay pressure on cooker task. that she was talking about. And don't let the pressure distract you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Taurus, is, this, is a, this is a really good year for you. Um, Earth energy has a lot of good stuff going on this year. For those of you guys that are born between like April 21st and the 30th, you guys have, um, you guys have, a, this is, this is an interesting thing to tell Tauruses, but there's an opportunity for change. So you have to be ready for it. Um, so if you're really attached to, to like, you know, I keep doing this when I do Taurus, like maintaining status quo, if you're too attached, it's going to be a lot harder for you. But if you just do allow the change, there's a lot of opportunities there. So that's really big for you guys. Um, for those of you that were born in that, that week window, right at the beginning of Taurus, um, but like your really good time is to, uh, is mid February, we said mid February to about the beginning of April. We had Mars and Taurus then, and that's really, um, that's supportive. a really great time. Yeah. Yeah. It's super support. supportive. You have so much energy to move. Tauruses don't like to change. Yeah. But the, but the good part is people born later, May 1st and beyond, they've got Saturn and Pluto trying it. Right. So you have all that support. So the Saturn and Pluto that we were talking about earlier that Deborah started out with, that's all happening for you. It's a really positive aspect for you. So it's a really great time to, like what we were talking about, that manifesting piece, taking the steps as Taurus do to make things happen. That's, so so is good if you. Aries is dealing with pressure, Taurus has a certain, a much more of an ease, especially with the second half of the year. Yeah. Except that beginning week, the April 21st to 30th, that's not easy. That's just get up. Yeah. Get up, listen and do. Okay, Geminis. Let's just talk briefly about Geminis since there's four of us here. <clears throat> you are the sign that loves change and this is your year. There's definitely some momentum going on 
um, Saturn is at 14 and Pluto right now is at, I want to say uh, 20. 20, that's what I thought. Okay. okay. So let's do Gemini. Gemini, um, you guys are Jupiter's and Sagittarius as we described. So it's, it's, a, it's giving us a chance to open up the door for Gemini's and Sagittarians in a way where there's an increase of energy, where we're feeling much more positive and, and optimistic. So this mm -hmm. is a whole year project for you guys, you Gemini's. This is like one of those years where they say, let's go do an adventure. Like let's go to Montreal or let's go to Toronto or let's go to France. Or you got to think about some fun factor. This mm -hmm. is true of both Gemini's and Sag. While Jupiter's here to give you some momentum. That's exactly I think this is a great year to take a retreat, to do a, to study something. You guys are, this definitely a good year to be curious and to travel for something that you want to learn more about. Like come to Hawaii. To like do, come to Hawaii maybe. And do a personal transformation. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. So, so the good news is that Gemini's, this is a great, you, you would be really in a good space right now to um, do, to do a class astrology. I mean, we start twice a year. Jupiter's in Sag, opposite your sun, anyone that's born from May 21st all the way through probably June 5th, you're mm -hmm. having a Jupiter transit right now. So come join us, come study, come learn. That's Gemini's are ready. So yes, they're ready. And oh yeah, this is the yeah. tricky part. So anyone born June 3rd to 10th, it's a little bit tricky. Neptune is squaring your sun, Neptune's in Pisces, and the sun is in Gemini. So there's a little bit of a challenge there. You want to describe Neptune square the sun? Um, Neptune square the sun can just be there's not, there's a chance that you're gonna get scattered if you if you don't pay it just can be multiple ideas. You can be um, your expectations and your reality don't always meet up. Exactly. So you just I always say that it might be a good opportunity for Gemini since we love to talk to other people to check in. Like, is this really what's happening? Am I really? Do is a this, reality yeah, check. Yeah, do a reality check with someone else who's not in Neptune Square of the Sun. Yeah, who's not a Gemini. <laughs> not giving you some crazy. Yeah, so Gemini's, this is a definite year for you for expanding, for traveling, for learning. And if you're born between June 3rd and 10th, be careful because you're, you can find yourself in multiple places and need someone to refer to. Yeah, it's kind of simple. Cancers, if you're born July mm. 4th to 16th, you want to write this down for all you early the July 4th babies. This is a really good, I love this transit. It's mm -hmm. not fun. I remember when you had this. It's, it's Saturn is asking you to work really hard, Cancers. Mm -hmm. This is a year of work and it's not necessary to be fun. It's necessary to be on task, follow the whole course to the end. So if you want to lose weight, for example, Cancers, mm -hmm. great time for losing weight. <clears throat> if you want to start a new business, Cancers, no one ever admits this, but Cancers are really good business people. Right. This is a really good um, time for you. Gemini dates were all year round, Peggy. That's, that, that's a whole, Gem Jupiter's in Sag the whole year, and it's going to hit you at some point. Don't worry about it. Um, and then July 10th to 16th, the people that are a little later in Cancer, you have Pluto opposite your sun. So that's different. Saturn's going to give cancer discipline to go do their work mm -hmm. and to follow through and stick the course and maybe be a little bored. But st Pluto's going to say to you, Pluto's going to say, you might want to take a look at some of your stuff. It's a review. It's a time to look at potentially the same thing we were talking about with Pluto and Saturn, like undoing a part of you. But like we always say that about Pluto, that's an undoing a part that isn't working. So it's a good time to get therapy, to increase self-care, that's the thing about, yeah, that's, Pluto is about going in and, and just making the changes that need to be made so you can use that Saturn energy to get disciplined about what it is that you really want for yourself. So, so Pluto is exactly what's going on in the government, and that's what's mm -hmm. happening for you cancers. You're having to reevaluate what's not working, and you're honestly facing the thing. Like, it's not easy. So anyone that's born July 10th to 16th, it's, it's a Pluto opposite the sun. What if cancer's in opposition to your sun sign? Doesn't matter. We're talking specifically about Pluto. Mm -hmm. and the sweet little dog who can't get enough love. <laughs> Pluto opposite the sun. For July 10th to 16th, you might want to learn about, go to a natural path. You might want to go to a therapist. You want to figure out, what can I do to review, she said, mm -hmm. unfinished pieces inside of me that requires some examination. It's a therapeutic time. Mm -hmm. 
And someone was asking earlier about what about June 21st or that early cancer. Early cancer, you spent the year with, you spent last year with Saturn opposite your son. So that was probably a little bit more hard work, really having to go in and do, be disciplined. It's easier for you this year. You have um, some positive support. You just came out of that Saturn opposite the sun. So now for you, it's about integrating. Like what is it that you're implementing from, that you yeah, learned from doing that, that work cycle. this past year in 2018? Just finally the pressure's off. Yep. So June 22nd to July 3rd is a little bit easier for you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you're a June 21st um, uh, cancer, you don't have as difficult a time going on right now. It's a little easier. July 17th and 18th, you're, yeah, you're not, it's nothing if, um, happening for you this year. Really? So, nice. I know, sorry, we got to get the dog off the bed. Hold on. Thing. So yeah, so, so yeah, if you're later degree, then you're going to have some of those Pluto and Saturn things next year. So so, yeah, so just enjoy this year. Yeah, enjoy this year. <laughs> Leos, you're having so much mm -hmm. fun. You're going to have a lot of energy coming towards you that has to do with um, drama and, and bouncing computers. So Jupiter trying Leo. The low side of this is, Leos, you've got a lot of energy coming at you that could create more and more drama. The upside is you've got a lot of energy coming at this creates more and more drama. The question <laughs> is, what are you doing with your drama? Right. You know, the Leo's big challenge in life is the narrative they have because they never do things small and they always have a story like, oh, you won't believe what happened to me. So you want to be careful because Jupiter's trying to support you. And if you don't, if you don't like the drama and you're a Leo, you're going to have to learn to like the drama because it's not going away. No, we did not listen to so cute. Did you finish Pisces? No, <laughs> Pisces came in late. No, we haven't done Pisces yet. <laughs> Pisces is last. So um, during your birthday month, Leo... There, that's would be oh, yeah. during August and half of July. There's going to be a lot of Leo. God, we figured it out. Right. There's like Mercury. There was a sun. There was one point the moon. Right. There was uh, Mercury, Mars, and Venus. And Venus. So right. there's a lot. Leo, you've got a really hot summer. In the meantime, preparing for that, because here we are in the dead of winter, you want to give yourself permission to stay attentive to your definition of fun. Like, what do you do for fun? Because honestly, Uranus is squaring you with the early people, July 24th to 31st. Mm -hmm. It could be very easy that life is stimulating you to see what your conviction is. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. Right. So um, Jupiter and Sag right now is like 14, but that's irrelevant. The point is, all Leos must pay attention, especially for the leading up for their birthday, to taking drama and rewriting it into an exciting drama. Right. Like, passion. What am I passionate yeah, what about? What am I excited about? Who right. can I be in love with? What can I do for mm -hmm. fun? Who can I help? Right. Exactly. God, if every Leo asked that question. Uh, that's exactly what we're supposed to be asking. Who can mm -hmm. I help rather than, oh, you won't help? Oh, what happened to me? <laughs> so Leos, get your complaining out, do it in one big thing, and then move on to how can I help? How can I help? That's your mantra, Leo. Right. How can I show my light help? on someone if else? If you can get, and then, and then don't give away too much because then you'll complain. So, <laughs> so as long as you help someone who's helping you, I think that's right. the thing with Leo. They yeah. want a mutual fan club. Ah, yeah. That's like they're right. willing to give and give yeah. and give, but God forbid the person doesn't get reciprocated. That's not a good thing. Okay. Leo That's, rising. Yeah, we got one. She, she's here. looking at but, me. But it's so fun when you're dealing with two people that have big personalities, they don't mind as long as they're feeding each other. Mm -hmm. But when the big person is giving too much to other people, eventually they get pissed off. <laughs> Leos get pissed. You guys know that. You may not have noticed that. And, and um, now we're on Virgo. Now we're in Virgo. You're having a slow start. The year picks up as the year goes on. Um, that's because, well, it's not a bad thing. You've got Saturn yeah. trining you, Pluto trining you. There's Jupiter and Sag squaring you. So it's not like you're being supported, Virgos, right now. It's more like you're staying the course. That's it. You're staying the course. You've got a task. It's not like, you know, when. But the good thing is the Saturn's trying. You've got some support. Yeah. The one group of people, September 5th to 13th, you want to write it down, Neptune is opposite you. It happens once in a lifetime. It will only happen once in, in your lifetime, um, Virgos. And that is twofold. It can create a wonderful opening for you to start thinking out of the box because Virgos get so stuck in the box. On the other hand, it can feel like you're losing your grip. I've right. seen this before. Like I remember when Neptune was in Capricorn. This is like 100 years ago. And she, I watched someone have a Capricorn, in this case a Virgo, have Neptune come. And it's so disorienting. So if, if those people that are born September 5th to 13th, you might give yourself permission to be a little less Virgoian, <laughs> a little less judgmental about yourself about not getting things right. 
And I love that, like, give yourself that space to dream. That's what we always say about Neptune. Give yourself, yourself the space to dream about what it is you want, because with Virgos, you have the ability to put it into action and create the spreadsheet to make it happen. Right. But like, you've got to give, this is an opportunity to let yourself dream. Like, what is it that I want to do? And ha then make it, and then bring it into earth and make it practical. Yeah, someone just said, thanks. Okay, so born between mm -hmm. the 14th and 20th, you guys, born mm -hmm. from 14th to the 20th, it's much easier because Saturn and Pluto are trining you. You're, it's, it's a really cool time for Virgos. Yeah. This is really your time, except for that Jupiter square, which I think right. is actually quite good because it's, it's giving you an angst, Jupiter squaring Virgo, but the Saturn and the Pluto are supporting you to manifest, right. which you're so good at anyways. But just make sure this is the big theme of our year, complaining and seeing everything that's wrong with Jupiter squaring your sun. I'm going to invite you to please, please, there's nothing wrong with complaining as long as you catch it. And your observer Virgo, and your observer comes on when you're same time. We got another one who thought that we missed Pisces. Oh my God, that's hysterical, Rico. Rico, <clears throat> did I miss Pisces? Of course you missed Pisces. Okay, let's do so. So Virgo, you're in a good year this year, yeah. 2019 and 2020. You've got the stability being able to ground you, and those early people that had Neptune, you can dream and imagine, and then make it happen, right. and and just be kinder to yourself. Good yeah. luck with that. Yeah. Libra. Mm. Mars opposite the right sun. Right now. Oh, right. Because right Mars now. is in Aries. Right. So, so you may be feeling a little, Libra, if you could be accident prone. You could be not feeling real well. You could be feeling a little argumentative, which is a, a Libra secret self. Like you're frustrated and you're not walking straight through things. Um, if you're born between October 4th and 17th, be deliberate because you're, you're having a square. Saturn and Pluto are coming to square you. So things aren't manifesting. Libras hate that. You're already indecisive and now you've got a conflict, but it's teaching you patience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you really, so the thing is, look, it says be decisive. Right. Really? Right. So if Saturn was, if Capricorn squaring Libra, Pluto and Saturn, and Libra is being supported Spring by Jupiter, yeah. but if the sun is squaring them right now, yeah, this is not the funnest beginning for you Libras. You're getting, I miss Pisces too, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Pisces is last. <laughs> Why does that tickle us? We start with Aries. Pisces is the twelfth sign. Last. <laughs> I'm a Libra. I know how to. I, will, I know how to tolerate. Yeah. So Libra, your your job right now is probably as much about um, dealing with frustrated energy, making decisions, mm -hmm. and then sticking to them. Sticking to them. That's what Saturn and Pluto are really going to ask you this year. Yes. It's like, how can you stick to them? Yes. How can you get rid of that indecisiveness? How can, or yes. good luck with that. But, you know, how can you, what is it? Is it flipping a coin? Is it writing a pros and cons list? What is that practicality that you can do to help you make a decision and stick to it? Yeah, I definitely do the flipping the coin thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, Scorpio. So Scorpio's had this amazing year last year, 2018. <clears throat> should have really given you some momentum, some travel, some love. Jupiter came across all of your Scorpio. So now you're dealing with the leftovers of that. You should still be riding that wave, but it's not as powerful. So you might be feeling, if you're born from the 24th to the 31st, mm. that opposite Uranus is coming in to kind of disturb you, to create a little bit of discomfort, it just because you were just riding the sweet, sweet energy. Um, the residue is to take a deep dive now and to look for some of your fire, like to keep it going. Mm -hmm. So get some people to support you. And the big thing is you've got the sex style. I love saying the sex style. I always think, I always think it's sexy. Sexy sex style. Sexy sex. Like Capricorn supporting you. So stay the course. Of course, Scorpio will do that. And use whatever came up last year. I want you to review mm -hmm. Scorpio. Go back and review what you did last year. Right. Like what was it that got cultivated in the beginning or the middle of Scorpio when you, it hit your sun? And now that it's passed into Sag Jupiter, what do you have behind you? Because you've got support from both Uranus at the end, middle of starting in March, Saturn and Pluto, and Neptune is going to be supporting you, you know, giving you some earth energy. So, or water, your Scorpios don't get caught in negativity. Yeah, don't get stuck in that. Yeah, I can just like sense that stuckness with the Capricorn. So could the low side could be you could get stuck. The high side is you have momentum. Exactly. That Follow. freight train that I always talk about with that Saturn or that mm. Capricorn Scorpio energy is right. like just keep the momentum going and just, yeah, and keep your focus steady. 
and you've got that Jupiter and Sag that can be giving you that energy to finish up what it is that you started or like, I love that review. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then we have Sag, lucky Sag. So you're the one, Sagittarians, I hope you're having fun. Yeah. I just was looking at this guy's chart. He was a double Sag. And I just was telling a friend on the phone, like, if you're not traveling right now or you're not <clears throat> expanding your business or thinking about a move or giving yourself permission to spend, this is your time. Like, I know we often as astrologers say to Sag, can you calm it down a little bit? But this is not your time to calm it down. So turn up the volume. Jupiter can sign today. We have travel, vacation, astrology, study. I love this. <laughs> change your career, change your business. Just turn it up. Yeah, if you're a Sag progress moon, go for it, Kelly. And making sure you're having fun. Whatever it is that you're doing, <clears throat> like bring, make sure that you're activating some fun within that. <clears throat> like, yes, fun as far as like exercising more, but turning mm -hmm. on the music. Like how, because mm -hmm. you need to get some energy moving. Yep. Yeah. I, I love watching this morning. I'm going for a walk. Okay, born December 8th to 14th, the sun is going to square Neptune. Okay. That's during Sag. Mm -hmm. Conflict or confusion. Keep your feet on the ground. Oh, this is so just kind of what we talked about with Virgo. So December 8th to 14th, they're having Neptune squaring their sun mm -hmm. and Jupiter activating it. Yeah. So your, your, um, the carefulness is there's so much energy coming at you, Sag, that you can get off the planet and become addictive or escape. So just be careful. Right. All Sagittarius and Sag rising, be careful that while the energy increases and you need to increase it, you stay awake. You don't just do it unconsciously and spend too much and look back and go, God, 2019, I really went over the top. I watched that thing with Chris and Deborah, and I knew I was going to spend too much money, but I couldn't control myself. Right. Yes, you can. Yeah. So that's that, those born between December 8th and 14th. You're especially prone to that this year. So just be careful with that. And then Capricorns, oh my God. So this is, now I'm going to add to this. If you're Saturn's in Capricorn and you were born in like 88 to 90, mm -hmm. or if you were born in um, 58 to 19, so 58 to 1960, mm -hmm. these are all Saturn and Capricorn people you've got a year. 2019 is going to be a year for you. So here's the deal, Capricorn. If you're 50, anyone that's between 28 and 30 and 58 and 60, we'll make it simple. This is your conversation. First of all, in January, we just had this crazy window with Pluto on the sun and that's, we had Capricorn out of the yin yang. So the pressure is on for all Capricorns, right. not that you don't live with enough anyways, to be able to deal with pressure. I mean, mm -hmm. the big issue is what does a Capricorn do when they're feeling they're not enough? They mm -hmm. should be doing more. They're not producing enough. They should be charging more. Because of Capricorns are any crazy. question? Does any of this resonating in all you Capricorns? Yeah, when you said meditate. Yeah, <laughs> you guys really need to take advantage right now yeah. of the intense focus of energy on you by not pressuring yourself anymore. So just know this will pass, but you got a whole year. There's, it's not a fun year but it's getting shit done year. Mm -hmm. Want to write that down? Yep. Get shit done year. Get shit done year. Capricorns. And then the people born between January 10th and 13th, this is just your birthday the last two days. <clears throat> this is a really powerful year of transformation. And you might want to go see a counselor. If any of you are feeling anybody born between January 10th and 13th, don't feel like something's wrong right. because Pluto's sitting on your head. Yep. Yeah. Get help. The best yeah, time. ask for help. This Just is ask for help. Do you want to do Saturn on their head? Yeah. So then we, for those of you born between January 2nd and the 12th through the 12th, you have Saturn conjunct the sun. So this is a time for you to be respectful to your goals, be patient, be durable. This is a durable time. But what we, you know, outside of what we told other people to go change your job and go do these things, this is the year not to change your job, not to really take on too much. This is really the year to stay steady, really stay the course with what you're doing and Yes. And you just like be into that. Don't, yeah, this is Don't not a expand. Big, yeah. What I always hear with people that have Saturn on their son is they say, God, I got so much more work. I can't believe it. That's right. So yeah. you don't change it. You just, it's going to pile on. You're going to really feel anybody born January 2nd to 12th. This is the time where it's like, you're the hot spot for everybody to give their stuff to. And you're going to have to just soldier through it until 2019, 20. 20. When the Saturn leaves the exact degree, it's sitting on you right now. Right. Saturn, it simply means, Maria, that you're restricted or contracted in a way that requires you to discipline and focus more and really be careful about 
saying yes to work, to too much work, but don't, don't keep complaining. This is, of course, the topic of, at hand this, this mm. whole year, is you don't complain about it. You just say, what you say is, I love this analogy, it's so hard. You just keep saying, it's so hard. <laughs> say it's so hard. It's true it's hard. Life is hard, but it's not a bad thing. You would hate if life was too easy, Capricorn. You'd right. have no mountain to climb. Right, you barely go to you. See, I'm Cap. I complain naturally, said Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> and your solar month wow you've got so much get up and go this during oh that's that's um Aquarius but did Capricorn have that was just their month it was just now yes yeah. you did they had you had so much energy come to focus for you this month Capricorn if you don't have um some work to do or something to clean something to organize you should very soon because this is definitely Capricorn yeah and in this we're still in this eclipse period where we just had the new moon in Capricorn back Mm, or, well, I don't know, a week ago or so, but we have that full moon coming this weekend. So we're in between this new moon and full moon where this energy is really intensified. So Capricorns, well, everybody, but especially Capricorns with the energy that you've had, just go for it. Like really be putting out what you want to manifest this year. And what is it you want to stay steady on? And what is it you want to stay the course on? And for those of you who have Pluto conjunct the sun, what is it that I want to review and I want to revisit? And I want to get help to transform and transcend. And you might not be likable, Capricorn. This isn't the time for making new friends. Sorry. Not that you're so attached to your friends, but you are a great friend. You just don't care whether they like you. This is just on task. Yep. Yes, Cheryl, you can rewatch this. <laughs> okay, now we have Aquarius. <clears throat> Born between January, early Aquarius, January 21st, 28th. You have a square. This is, that's a tricky one. When Uranus squares the sun, it's gonna go on for this whole year for early bird Aquarians. And it means that your energetic body is being instigated or triggered or like irritated. It's an irritation system mm -hmm. that makes you short tempered. It gives you a little less patience and it also makes for change. Like that's a really good thing for you. You're ready for change Aquarius. Yeah. You, and you can get stuck. So this is a great time. Those early bird Aquarians, if you're thinking about wanting to change your job or breaking out of a relationship, it mm -hmm. will come back later, but there's a little bit of irritation going on. Then they got the Jupiter sex dialing. The rest of you Aquarians after the 28th, you know, and into February, all you February Aquarians, you have Jupiter sex dialing all your energy. So you guys have a lot. This is a big visionary year for you. This is a, um, it's a great year. It's like, and, and you know, I think Capricorns, Aquarians get along great. Mm -hmm. So with all the Capricorn and with Jupiter supporting your visions, Aquarius, this is your time mm -hmm. <clears throat> to like feel free to give yourself permission, especially to study astrology. Like you've got a lot of juju right, right now. Mm -hmm. And yet you're grounded because I, I feel like Aquarius and Capricorn are good friends one one right. next to each other, right. but they both have that winter seriousness mm -hmm. to stay the course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Solar month. Your solar month, that would be? when During their, their month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a good with because with, we have Mars and Aries and I think was what we were looking at. Yeah. So that get up and go, like really initiating. This is a really good initiating time for you too from like, you know, as soon as we hit Aquarian sun this weekend on Sunday. Saturday night, whatever, you know, this is a really great time for you to really be putting into action what it is your plans for 2019. Exactly. So Aquarius, this is a good, your birthday month, which is coming up, is a good time for you to be visionary, visioning. Visioning. Okay, Pisces. Now everybody, look, it's so funny. Yeah, Someone just Pisces. gave us, I love this, Kimberly. She just gave us a whole chart. It's okay, Kimberly. <laughs> we're going to stop now and do Kimberly's chart. So can someone please, just kidding. Kimberly. Okay, you Pisces, now we're first. Here you are, you're first. Kimberly, you're so cute. We can't do your chart. Where's those 500,000 people in the room? Okay, so let's go to Pisces, the ones that were thinking they missed, but they didn't. <clears throat> so first they have Jupiter square their sun, and that's because Jupiter's in Sag, sun is in Pisces, you were born with Pisces rising, and that's hard enough to begin with because they're both mutable. It's, right. it's a, it, and, and because Jupiter expands everything, it's like um, MSG, it's super sauce. You've got to be very careful, Pisces, in this window to take, like, enjoy the openness and then mm. rely on that Capricorn. I would, med if I was you, Pisces, I would meditate on Capricorn, Saturn and Pluto trying to compliment you, trying to give you some ground. So if you're feeling scattered, if Jupiter's coming to scatter you, lead in. To, mm -hmm. to Saturn and Pluto and Cap and Uranus by March and Taurus, it's helping ground and you need to know how to ground. Yes. Oh my God. But if you're <laughs> born between March 4th and 11th, I like that word March 4th. <laughs> All you March 4th babies, March 4th towards Neptune. This is really, you got to be careful. 
-hmm. people born that week. You're more sensitive, you're more emotional, you're dreamier than you already started. <laughs> uh, this is the thing about Neptune. If you were spiritual, you could find yourself being very disillusioned with mm -hmm. Neptune coming over your sun. Mm -hmm. If you weren't spiritual, you might find one of your friends who's a Pisces who never believed in this stuff is starting to believe in it. So that window of Mar people born between March 4th and 11th, you're in a transformational cycle. Neptune on the sun is unrecognizable when it's over, but during it, it can feel very disorienting. Right. So here's all that earth. They've got so much of grounding their birthday month. Well, right. Listen to this, you guys. During your birthday month, Mars is in Taurus. Uranus will have entered Taurus during yes. Pisces. Yep. Pluto yep. and Saturn will be sex. Yeah, Pisces, this is a good year for you, 2009, 2019, if you have a clear goal. That's all we're asking you. And you want to use that, that grounding. I saw somebody wrote in here, I have no Earth in my chart. Well, this would be a great year for you to cultivate some Earth, especially if you're born between that March 4th and 11th. You know, like a like an actual mm. meditation practice that has like some grounding involved with it. Or I have a great idea for all of you listening. I have a book called The Missing Element, mm -hmm. especially for you Pisces. Yes. And you can go on my website, Deborah Silverman Astrology, and click on my book and we'll mail you one directly to your house with your chart in it. And then if you know you're missing element like earth, you learn the grounding meditation, you clean your closets, you learn how to do routine, right. you start having smoothies first thing in the morning, that's fine. <laughs> You do whatever it takes to routine, but that book will really help. It's called The Missing Element. You can also get it on Amazon. But if you're missing an element, especially you Pisces, I want all the Pisces to go get that book. Right. Yeah, you guys need some grounding. And someone was writing about March 2nd and 3rd. You guys, you already went through it. So congratulations, you're done. <laughs> yeah, good news. I love all the positive feedback. That book, that book is really going to help you. There's two things yes. you can do this year, 2019. The first one is take the course. It's, I think the card opens the 22nd. A week from today. So you want to learn about your missing element. You want to learn about how to understand astrology from a deeper level. Take the course. Mm -hmm. Chris and I are working right now like crazy at the launch, getting you guys all excited. We get people coming to Hawaii to study with us. There's a whole range. Here we are. Or buy the book as a beginner step or we have the star community, which you can also Google the star community where you can learn mm -hmm. in a much, so there's the book, that's the low end. There's the star community. That's just a monthly subscription to learning. And then there's the course, which is really where you get to learn all about your chart. Take a deep dive. Only 10 people in a class, mm -hmm. one mentor. Chris has taught the mentors. I've designed the class, mm -hmm. put us together. And what do you get? Fun. 